Welcome to this lesson that's going to start off Unit 7, which is Exponents. Today we're going to focus on the very first section, which is Chapter 8 in your textbook. And you will be needing your books this unit as we're going to be selecting homework assignments from the text. So this is Section 8.1, Multiplying Exponents. We're going to start off with just some basics about exponents. So if we have the expression 2 to the third power, um, I want you guys to circle the base. That would be the large number 2. Let's label that base. Most of you know then that the exponent is 3. And then the whole expression, 2 to the third, is considered a power. And what an exponent or what a power really means is that you're multiplying the base a certain number of times. So here, since our base is 2 and our exponent is 3, we're going to do 2 times 2 times 2. And check yourself, a lot of times students will say 6 here, but we're not adding, we are multiplying. So the total would be 8. So I'd like you to just press pause here, and I want you to come up with the expressions for these exponential um, that are given right below, so 2 to the 8th and 5 to the 3rd. And then once you come up with your answers, then you can go ahead and press play again. So as we expand number 1 here, 2 to the 8th, it, the answer is 256. And hopefully you're not typing in 2 times 2 times 2 um, 8 times on your calculator. Hopefully you're finding the, the calculator key. Um, it would either be y to the x, x to the y, or it could be the caret key. I'm hoping that most of you are probably dealing with the caret symbol. Um, so one of those three keys would be what you're looking for for your powers. All right, the second one, 5 to the third, ends up being 125. All right, so we're going to move into um, how do we simplify expressions that have exponents. And our first property is called the product of powers property. And it looks like this x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. What I want you guys to write down here is when you multiply powers that have the same base, you should add the exponents. You'll note that the x's, the bases, those are the same. And then the m and the n are going to represent the numerical power. So again, when you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. And if you have a highlighter or if you want to underline the adding the exponents here, that's the key. All right, so we're going to show our work here. Even though when you're doing your homework, you're not necessarily going to do that. So our first problem, 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th, we're going to show here it's 2 to the 3 plus 4. And we're just going to show that because these are your notes. We want to show where this is coming from. And then the answer would be 2 to the 7th. And for now, we're just going to leave this in exponent form. You're going to want to pay attention to the directions in your homework to determine if you're going to leave the product in exponent form or if you're going to expand it out. All right, number two, we've got 8 times 8 to the third. And you may say, hmm, we don't have two exponents here, but we really do. Just like we had with lines, we have that invisible one. You want to go ahead and write that invisible one right in there. So now our work would look like this. 8 to the 1 plus 3. Which you can see what Mr. Vandenecker wrote out here. He really just expanded it to show you that when you do 8 to the 1 plus 3, you get 8 to the 4th. But if you were to write those out in expanded form as well, you can see that you're multiplying four 8s together. All right, in 3 and 4, we've got um, some different examples here. We've got y as the base, but you treat it the same way. It's just y to the 2 plus 5, which ends up being y to the 7th. In number 4, we again are just multiplying with the same base, so it ends up being 5 to the 1x plus 3x. And since those are like terms, we can go ahead and combine those, and we just end up with 5 to the 4x. Okay, so these are some examples of how that property is put to use. Next, we're going to look at some definitions. Um, the first important definition is for a monomial. If you underline that prefix mono, that should make you think of the word one, and that's actually part of our definition here. Um, a monomial is an expression with one term. Now, I've put in parentheses here that um, you're only going to see multiplication and division with monomials. If you start seeing a plus sign or a minus sign, that's going to indicate that you actually have more than one term. So let me give you some examples of, of monomials. Um, one example could just be a plain number like 7. You could also have 7 with a variable, so like 7x or 7xy. 
you could have a negative number. You could have something like negative 2, x to the second, y to the third, z to the fifth. You'll notice as long as things are multiplied together, it could be any number of variables, any number of constants. It's just one term as long as we're just dealing with multiplication and division. The next definition, coefficient, is a, a definition you should be familiar with. A coefficient is simply the number that's in front of the variable. So if you look at our previous examples, um, 7x, 7 would be the coefficient. If you look at the last one, negative 2x to the second, y to the third, z to the fifth, negative 2 is the coefficient. And for our next set of examples, you're going to be using the following steps um, to simplify products of monomials. So products means we're actually going to be multiplying two monomials together. So you'll want to pause and you'll want to write down these steps. And then after you're done writing down these steps, you want to press play again and we'll go on with our examples. All right, so our first example, um, we're going to follow the steps that you just wrote down. And we're going to start by grouping the coefficients. So the coefficients here are going to be 5 and a negative 3. And we are multiplying, so we're going to continue to multiplying, so 5 times negative 3. Then we're going to group the like variables. And in this problem, we only have one variable. So we're going to do x to the first times x to the second. Okay, so if we just quickly glance back at the steps, we group the coefficients, we group the variables. Um, now we just have to work on multiplying and simplifying. So when we simplify here, we've got 5 times negative 3, which gives us negative 15. We're going to apply the property that we just learned about. And when we multiply exponents with the same base, we're going to add. So our final answer ends up being negative 15x to the third. We didn't have to worry about the alphabetical order here because we only had one variable. All right, moving on. Our second example, we're going to do the same thing, grouping the coefficients. So 3 times 20. Then we're going to group the like variables. So it looks like I have m to the second times m to the first. And then I only have a p to the second, so I don't have anything I can group that with, but I do want to include that as part of my answer. So we go ahead and simplify. 3 times 20 gives us 60. We add the powers on the m, so we get m to the third. And then we just bring down that p to the second. Then just do a quick double check. Um, make sure that your number comes first and that your letters are in alphabetical order, which they are. So it looks like we're good for our final answer. All right, on the next two, um, why don't you try number three? So press pause and then just try combining number three on your own. And then when you're finished, um, press play again and then you can look through our solution here. So we're going to start. We're going to group these coefficients. So I've got the four times the eight times the two. I'm going to group the d's. So d to the third times d to the fourth times d to the first. Then we're going to group our e's here, e to the fifth e to the sixth, and e to the first. And then lastly, we're going to have our f's here. It looks like we've just got f to the first and f to the first. Okay, and we've kind of organized these already, so they are in alphabetical order. So when we simplify here, we'll pretty much be done. Um, 4 times 8 times 2, we're going to end up with 64. When you add the powers on the d, we have d to the eighth. Again, adding the powers on the e, we have e to the twelfth and f to the second. So hopefully you came up with that same answer on your own. All right, last example here. Um, we are missing some of the coefficients, kind of. You can see the negative signs there. You're going to put in that, that one, just like we were doing in the past. So we've got a negative one in front of both of these monomials. So we're going to start by grouping those negative ones together. So we've got negative one times negative one. Then we're going to kind of put things in alphabetical order right away here. It looks like I've got j to the third and k, j to the 6th. Then we're going to look at the k's, k to the 7th times k to the 2nd. And then this l, make sure it doesn't look like a 1. Maybe try and do a loop here so that you don't get confused with l's and 1's. Um, we've got l to the 5th times l to the 11th. And hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. We're going to multiply our coefficients. So a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a 1. You can write that or you can leave that off, just like we were doing in the past with lines. We're going to add all our powers. So we have j to the ninth, k to the ninth, and l to the sixteenth. Again, you can have that one in front or you don't need it. So this should set you up for the first section of notes. Um, you can now go ahead and try the homework assignment associated with section 8.1.